Good morning. Welcome to our Thursday update. I uh, hope you're having a great week. Uh, at least to me, I can feel a little bit of that change in the air. The fall is here. Uh, for sure, in terms of the church calendar, we can tell fall is here. If you were at church last Sunday, you might have noticed that there were a lot of announcements in the announcement video because so many things were starting up. But it's also just really fun to see everyone back together and, and ministries moving forward. So uh, I'm happy to see fall here at last. Uh, hey, how about for a photo of the day? Uh, this is a little bit different one. Uh, I'm, if you know Molly Oman, Molly is a member of our church, and she does this beautiful driftwood art. Um, it's really amazing. And she actually has a show at the Squim Museum happening this month. Uh, this is just a picture of one piece, and I'm sorry, it's not a great picture, um, but this is a, a horse, and this is all done out of driftwood. And she's got a whole bunch of pieces at the Squim Museum, and so if you get a chance, I'd encourage you to go down and see those. Uh, re really nice work. All right, let's talk about announcements. Sunday, we will be continuing our study called Scroll 2, the origin story of the church according to Luke. We're looking at the book of Acts, and uh, we'll be in Acts chapter 2 this Sunday. So if you want to read ahead, just read Acts chapter 2, and then we'll be talking about that more Sunday morning. Also, Sunday morning, we do every fall what we call our fall ministry fair. And over a series of about five Sundays, we feature different ministries within our church. They'll be set up in the entryway with tables where you can get information, find out how you can be involved, and just kind of learn the, sort of the scope of ministries that are going on at DCC. Uh, this Sunday, we are going to uh, be featuring our family ministries. So our youth ministries, children's ministries, mom to mom, uh, the boost ministry, uh, they'll all have tables out in the entryway, so you can check those out. Uh, speaking of youth, I was talking to Josh last Sunday night. They had a dodgeball night, and he had 35 kids show up for a high school junior high event. So that was really fun uh, to see. Then, coming up September 21st, which is Saturday morning, there's going to be a babies and breakfast. And uh, that's going to start at 10 a.m., from 10 to 11.30 in the main auditorium. And so if you have got a brand new little one or if you're expecting a new little one, uh, be sure to come for Babies and Breakfast with Pastor Josh and Heidi. Uh, then coming up on September 27th, starting at 6 p.m., there is a dinner and a fundraiser. The funds are being raised for the Guatemala mission trip. We're sending a team down. And so dinner will be served. There's also going to be a silent auction and uh, a talent show that goes with it. And Burnett has been working on uh, the talent show portion of it and it sounds really fun. We've got a lot of talented people in our congregation. They're going to share those talents with us and it all goes toward a good cause to get our team to Guatemala. So why don't you make plans to be here, be in the DCC auditorium on September 27th. Also in the auditorium, Couple nights later, December 29th, uh, Children's Ministries, they're going to have a cardboard car movie invite night. So kids get to come down and make cardboard cars. We'll have boxes here and arts and crafts supplies. And so they get to, parents can help them out. They all work together to build these cars. Then they have a drive-in movie. They can sit in their cardboard cars and watch a movie on the big screens. And uh, it's an invite night, so we really encourage you, if you know families with young children, uh, this is a great way to invite them to come and get involved and get exposed to our ministries as a church and have a fun evening as a family. So that is coming up on September 29th from 3 to 5 p.m. I might also say, I know that Josh is going to be in the market for big boxes, you know, like kid cardboard car size boxes. Uh, if you know where some are in good condition, why don't you let Josh know? And you can email him, josh at dcchurch.org, or give the church office a call, and I'm sure he'd be interested in that information. Looking ahead, October 18 through 20, I've been mentioning this prior, there is a save the date for mom to mom their fall retreat, 
So ladies, if you're part of the mom to mom group, be sure you've got that on the calendar. And I believe you can go to the events page at dcchurch.org and get registered for that even now. All right, how about a scripture for the day? Now, this one, I need to give you a little bit of context as to what it comes from. Because we're in the book of Acts, of course, I've been doing a lot of studying and reading there. Uh, I'm working several weeks ahead of whatever week I'm preaching on. And uh, in the course of my studying, I was working on Acts chapter 4. And as I've told you, there's so much material in Acts that I'm not hitting every single thing that there is uh, in the book of Acts. I'm picking some highlights that I want to cover. But there is some really interesting stuff that isn't going to make it in the sermon, but I still think it's worth thinking about. And one of those is what happens toward the end of Acts 4. Now in Acts 4, that is where Peter and John are going up to the temple and they encounter a lame man. And maybe you remember the story. The lame man is begging for alms. Peter looks at him and he says, I don't have silver and gold for you, but what I do have is, uh, in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And the guy's healed. Well, of course, that brings a huge crowd. This guy's dancing and shouting for joy right there in the temple courts. People are rushing over to see what's happened. And that gives Peter a chance to preach to the crowd. Well, in the course of preaching to this crowd, he irritates the temple leaders and they get him and John arrested. Which, once Peter and John appear before the temple elders, Peter once again gets a chance to preach, and he does. Um, ultimately, they give them a warning to not talk about this Jesus stuff anymore, which, of course, that doesn't work. But um, they release them and let them go. And the first thing Peter and John do is they go and find a group of their friends, tell them what's happened, and then they all join together in prayer. And the very end of Acts 4 is the record of what they were praying. And I want to read you just one section of that prayer. This comes from Acts chapter 4, verses 28 and 29. Speaking to the Lord, Do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. What caught my attention in this is there's two parts in this little piece of the prayer. One is an acknowledgement of God's sovereign plan. They say, we know, Lord, that you have a plan, that you have predestined some things to take place. But then there's also a request for God to grant them courage that they would have boldness to preach the word. Now, if you have been around church as much, you'll know that one of the theological debates that often happens is between God's sovereignty versus man's free will. So, do we actually have a free will? Do we make our own free decisions? Or is everything God's predestined plan? Does the world operate by God's predetermined plan, or does the shape of the world constantly change based on our decisions? And, and that debate has gone on for <clears throat> years in lots of venues. I find this verse interesting because you see both things coming together. And, and so how is that? How is that God can be sovereign, and yet people can still be praying for him to help them choose to do? to be bold to do something he's called them to do. Here's the way I think about it. And, and this doesn't answer all the questions because that's a part of that God alone fully understands, right? But here's the way that I think about God's sovereign will versus human free will. I think of God's sovereign will being like the channel of a river where God has set out the course that the river is going to flow in. Uh, time, if you will, started when God said it would start, it will stop when God says it will stop. And God knows the course that is going to happen in between. He has set the course of the river. Within that river, there's us. We are part of the stream. And it appears that God has allowed us some freedom to choose how we want to place ourselves in the stream. But that's what these folks are praying about, right? saying, Lord, we know that you have a plan. You have predestined things that are happening. The coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, the 
uh, of course, Christ's coming. And, and he said those things were planned way before and they are happening. But we also know we have some choices about how we position ourselves in the river. You've asked us to preach, but we could be too afraid to do it. We could slide off into a side eddy and, and not really be engaged in what you want us to be doing. It's not going to ultimately change the course of the river. It's not going to stop God's plan, but, but we wouldn't be part of it the way you want us to. So the prayer is, God, would you give us boldness that we would be fully in the stream of what you're doing, that we'd be preaching the gospel um, and helping to accomplish the thing that you have already determined you want to see done. Uh, so I guess the question that all of us have is not so much um, what is God's will, what is his plan, or how do I help him make his plan? God knows his plans. The real question is, um, am I going to really be part of it? Am I going to be in the flow of what God's doing? Uh, or am I going to hold back or, you know, be lazy or be passive? So, for that may not be anything big necessarily. Uh, sometimes it's just being available to help a friend who's in need. But I think all of us should be in that place of saying, Lord, would you give me the courage and would you give me the, the desire to step fully into the stream of what you're doing? Let's pray. Father, thank you for the encouragement that you are the God who's in control. That uh, no matter how chaotic the world may seem to us, it is never out of control for you. Father, I pray that you will give each one of us that boldness, just like the early church prayed for, the boldness to step in and be part of your plan. That where you want us to speak for you, Lord, give us the courage and the words to speak. Where you want us to act, to serve, to give, Father, give us the, uh, the grace and the discipline and the desire to fully step into those opportunities. Uh, Lord, may, may we be a church that is making a difference in our community for you, that we truly and fully be part of your plan. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, that's going to wrap us up for today. I hope we'll see you Sunday morning, either in person or online. Don't forget, if you are watching online, we now are live streaming the first service, the 9 a.m. service. So you can watch the Sunday morning service anytime from 9 o'clock or later. But really, I hope you come in person. We'll see you then. Till then, be blessed. Mm -hmm.